to our hamstring stretching. I've just come to join in. He's suddenly decided he thinks he needs to be involved in this. So tucking the chin in once more. And down we go, letting the arms be heavy. Good boy, Badger, can you do this? And just settling into where you feel your hamstrings start to engage. So you might well be up here. Wherever you're at, just bend into your right leg and see how that changes this stretch. All of a sudden it will have intensified it in the left leg, which is fine. And then slowly transition and bend into the left knee, straightening the right. So we're just isolating each of the two hamstrings here and switching back over to bending the right. You'll probably be well aware of where the hamstring then comes up into the glute or the buttock muscles. Let's change one more time. So really slowing everything down so that you're aware of what's actually happening in your body, which bits are stretching and getting longer maybe. And then just slowly tucking the head in and rolling back up. And stretching out through the feet, just allowing a little bit of movement into those hamstrings that have had a good old stretch now. <coughs> and then let's, let's just see how that feels if we come into downward facing dog. So we're going to bring our hands down, remembering if you need to use your wrist support, this is a good time to do it and stepping back with one foot and then the other foot. So make sure you're not too short. If, if you are very flexible in your hamstrings, you might be tempted to be quite short in your downward facing dog. Essentially, you want to be able to go from downward facing dog into plank without readjusting. So set yourself up, maybe in which case it's easier to start in plank. So I don't know if you can see my feet, I'm, I'm on the balls of my feet here. I feel I'm in a nice straight line. I've got some movement forward and back. And then I can go into downward facing dog. Now from here, once you're in your downward facing dog, so remembering it's an extension of the spine here, pushing the chest back towards the thighs and letting your shoulders really settle into this pose. So reaching away with the fingers, you're very active in the arms, raising your hip bones up high. And then just start to pedal into the feet, seeing how that feels. So we've got a lot of opposite actions going on here. So I'm quite active in my hands and my shoulders but also I'm stretching my hamstrings. And then after you've walked them through a couple of times, just come to stillness and let your heels drop slightly and see where you're feeling the sensations when you drop your hamstrings. If this becomes too much in either your wrists or your, your hamstrings, just take a break for your wrists in particular Drop down onto your knees, perhaps you can stretch your, your plantar fascia again. But if it's your, if it's your legs that are really feeling like they're working hard here, just bend your knees a little bit, see how that changes things. But all the time, visualising your spine being a string of pearls that's in a beautiful, long, straight line. So again, start to drop the heels. Think about sucking your abs in. And then bending into the knees. And drop the heels, bending into the knees. Drop the heels, bending into the knees. 
drop the heels. And then just bringing your body weight forward, coming onto your knees and taking a break. So hopefully by now you're starting to feel that your hamstrings are getting a good old stretch and they're warming up. which will prepare you for many, many more yoga poses that you can do or for your run. Certainly if you've just come in from a run, that's a nice thing to do to be able to pedal it out in downward face, facing dog. Just bring a bit of relief into tight hamstrings. And then we need to just think about things that we can do that will be a counter to the work that we've been doing. So. Coming into hands and knees, but with your hands a little bit further forward, just bring your body weight forward until you're on the tops of your thighs rather than your knees. Obviously, if you've got any knee discomfort, you might want to put a blanket or something under there. That's absolutely fine, but bring your body weight forward. And we're just going to hang here for a moment. So, so arms aren't rigid. We're, we're fairly relaxed in the arms here, just seeing how we feel and then pushing back and coming forward. There should be no pinching in the lower back here. If this is not a good posture for you, just lower down. And from here, you can just ease yourself up very, very gently. And then slowly coming into extended child's pose. So fingertips reach away, really active in the shoulders here. And then turning around and coming to seated. <coughs> if you did yesterday's practice, um, we looked at all the homemade props we can use to help us with our yoga poses. And uh, there's a really nice hamstring stretch that we did, which I'll show you again today. Excuse me, slurping on my coffee. I've still got a dry throat after I had laryngitis last week and, and I'm still getting over it. I feel fine, I just sound awful. Hello Badger, if you come to assist. So what you'll need for this one is your, your yoga strap or in Badger's case, we have his dressing gown cord, which is plenty long enough. And just come to seated where you sit on whatever you need to, to allow you a lovely straight upright spine. Now you might find it easier with your other homemade prop to just stick your bum up on a block. You're not really helping now, are you? No. And then moving your badger out of the way, getting your strap and hooking it around the balls of your feet. So sitting nice and tall, I don't think anyone can see anything with you there. You're not a very good assistant really, are you? No. Can you lay down? Can you lay down please? Let me hudge a little bit further forward so you can see the bits that are being worked here. So I've hooked my dressing gown belt around the balls of my feet. I'm not going to sit on my block because it's too much trouble with badger in the way. No. Sitting nice and tall with a strap in either hand, we're going to use the tension in holding the strap to just pull ourselves upright. And by doing this and keeping the feet active, and by active I mean with the toes pulling back towards your shins, you should feel a lovely hamstring stretch there. Now, if like me, a quick test here, if when you pull your toes back towards your shins, your heels raise off the mat, you're hypermobile in your knees, which means you need to take care of your knee joints. Anything like hamstring stretching, or if we're doing deep, wide folds or anything like that, you do need to protect your knees because when you're hypermobile, it means that the joint goes further than the normal range of movement for that joint. So instead of stopping where it's straight, it goes on a little bit further. 
Um, so in this instance, it doesn't, it's not a big deal. We're just sitting here encouraging great posture by holding on to the strap here. So you're quite strong in your arms, your biceps are doing some work here. You're pulling your toes back towards your shins and you're getting a lovely hamstring stretch. And then the other one we can do from here. Again, seated, I'll turn to face you. You can bring the sole of your right foot into the inside of your thigh of your left foot, grabbing the strap around the ball of the left foot, pulling yourself upright, and slowly move your hands down the strap. So we're not getting smaller and smaller this way, we're still staying really tall, but we're hinging from our hips, which is increasing the stretch in the hamstring. So we might just be able to get a little bit further because we've only got one leg working here. And then up to centre and swap the feet around. <coughs> so set yourself up first, maybe you're on your block, maybe you're just sitting flat on the ground like I am, maybe you're on a cushion, but you want to be right on the very edge which allows your spine to be upright. And then just hinging from the hips and then maybe coming a little bit further down. And ensuring that you're breathing with ease the whole time, which means that the energy is flowing, your cells are carrying fresh, fresh oxygenated blood, your muscle energy is getting replenished, and you may be able to go a little bit deeper. So what we're trying to visualise here, this isn't, we've all seen the pictures of really graceful, um, beautiful women who have got their legs tucked around their heads or their chins on their legs. It looks lovely, but yoga's a feeling, it's not a look, it's how it feels, it's what it's allowing you to do. So just have the visualisation that your chin is coming to your shin and that your hamstring is getting longer and that's good enough, plenty good enough. You, you will still look fat at the same time. And then slowly coming up and taking the strap off there for a minute. And you can also do some hamstring stretches laying down. We also did this yesterday. So coming to laying down, exactly the same stretches but with your spine absolutely being in the right position here. So we've got the length of the spine flattened on the mat. We're taking hold of the strap with both hands, both elbows stay on the mat as we ease the thighs towards our body. And just coming to settle here with ease. And then bring the right foot out and set it down on the mat. And take hold of both the straps with your left hand. Really keep this foot active so that this is still being stretched here. And then slowly let the leg fall out to the side, making sure that the right knee doesn't go as well. So holding on to the right hip. Then only take the leg as far as you can go so that when you release the tension on the strap, you can bring the leg back without having to haul it back with the strap. So then we would repeat that. Oh no, before we do that, we're going to let it just go to the other side. So we're stretching the TFL and the IT band here, which is, uh, they help stabilize the hip. So when we're walking, then back to center, swapping the legs over. So letting the right hip fall out towards the right, keeping that foot active, releasing the tension, bringing the leg back up and then swapping sides. Much smaller range of movement when we're coming across the body. That's fine. You only need to go as far as where you can feel it working. And then back to centre and hug both knees into the chest and have a little rock and roll here. 
then of course the last one that you can do or another one that you can do until I thought of some more you can cross one ankle over the thigh push that hip joint open there by pushing the knee away reaching through you can do this with your strap if you can't if your leg is a long way away and it means you've got to do this you must keep your head and neck on the mat for this use your strap and just encourage that in towards the body so the first thing that's happening here we're getting a nice stretch in the maximus gluteus on our right hand side in our bum muscles but then if we extend that left leg away hello the hamstrings are involved again so you might even want to initiate the stretch from here but make sure that your elbows are down on the mat and then of course we don't want to be lopsided so we need to do this both sides and stretching the glute here and then really stretching away with that heel keeping the foot active and then slowly bringing that down <coughs> and then just letting your knees roll over to the right and then the left and then the right and this time leave them over on the left maybe turn your head and look to the right and then come into center bring your knees up to the middle and letting them drop over to the right and then turn your head and look to the left And then slowly bringing everything back to centre again. Taking one leg away long and then the other leg away long. Arms are just apart from the body, palms are upstretched. Letting the eyes close. And bringing your focus inward again and just seeing what sensations you're aware of. We've done a lot of work in the feet and the hamstrings we've done a little bit of work in the wrists so this time this pose is the most important pose of the whole practice where we just give our body a chance to relax and recuperate and make sense of the positions it's been put in Allowing the energy to flow completely undisturbed now. We're just getting a sense of equilibrium before we leap off our mats and hurl ourselves into our busy day. So take as long as you possibly can here, perhaps making yourself warm and snug, putting some socks on, putting a jumper on, getting a blanket, that's really nice. The number of my students that pay me just to come for blanket time. It's lovely. Tim, I'm going to mention you again. So staying here for at least three minutes if you can. Perhaps putting on a lovely piece of music. And then at the end of that time, just coming to rest on your right hand side. Just for a breath or two before pushing yourself up and coming to seated. <coughs> Bringing your hands to meet at your heart centre and just bowing your head for a moment to acknowledge, silently acknowledge the time that you've set aside for your mind and body to meet, for you to become one with your breath and to have an appreciation of just how amazing your body is. Namaste. Thank you for doing yoga with me again today. I don't know where Badger's gone, lost interest. See you again. <laughs>